Hi everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. In today's video, it's actually the first champion build guide, first champion review on the channel, and it is for Archmage Helmut. He's the first epic that you get from the Doom Tower secret rooms on normal difficulty, and he's an absolute game-changing champion when you get him. He's extremely good, extremely solid, uh, basically giving you AoE crowd control with AoE stuns and also speed boosting your team. He's an absolute speed demon, a speed freak. Uh, yeah, he's just a support that brings good damage, good control, just good at everything. So let's take a look at how we do him. Um, this is, again, the first guide I've done on the channel. So uh, if you like it, let me know. If there's anything you'd rather I do differently, any questions I left out that you would have wanted to see answered, or or if you prefer changes to the format, let me know in the comments as well, and I can try to adapt your feedback, uh, bring your feedback into the next videos, change up them. Um, and yeah, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel. I hope that you will enjoy it. Um, yeah, let's, like, let's look at his skills first, and then we'll look at his stats and stuff like that. But Helmet, um, his A1, uh, is Arcane Dynamo, attacks one enemy, fills his terminator by 10%, 20% if the attack is critical. So again, helping him run really fast, you'll see speed is a big part of his kit. And actually, in terms of the books, books up his damage a lot. They add a lot to his damage. Time slip then, his A2, three turn cooldown when booked, attacks one enemy. If that crits, it then attacks all other enemies as well. And that second hit, so when it attacks all other enemies, it has a 50% chance, 75% chance when booked to place a stun debuff for one turn. Then after attacking, decrease the turn meters of each enemy without a stun debuff by 20%. So even if he doesn't stun, he's still getting some okay turn meter control out of it as well. But this is a this is just such an insanely good ability. This is insanely good. It's very rare to get AoE stuns in this game. They're very rare. And he's got a very solid chance, 75% chance to do it on such a short cooldown. I think, again, probably the most well-known game-changing champion in the entire game is probably still of the Drakes, right? Your daily login reward, the first legendary most people get. When you consider how much how good Wing Beat Flurry is, again, three-turn cooldown, when booked, 35% chance times two of stunning all enemies. So on average, about a 70% chance to stun all enemies. So three-turn cooldown, 70% chance to AoE stun on a legendary, on Syl, one of the, you know, really best legendaries in the game, Archmage comes in and he's doing similar stuff, right? 75% chance to stun all but the first enemy you hit in AoE, three turn cooldown. It's phenomenal. And then even giving you turn meter depletion if it doesn't work. Then his A3 is insane as well. Psychic Guidance, five turn cooldown, three turns when booked, places 30% increased speed, 30% increased crit rate, 30% increased crit damage on all allies for two turns. Again, super good. Helping your team run fast and just crit more, do more damage. Yeah, really good. So, so the, the package that he's bringing that really makes him shine is speed boosting your team and then stunning and decreased turn meter on the enemy team. Very rare for champions to bring that together. And it's an incredibly potent package in Doom Tower Hard, uh, in well, Doom Tower Normal as well. Uh, can be used in clan boss, can be used in arena great for dungeons and in fact i actually use him on several end game teams like literally end game team i'll show you the teams i use him on currently uh in a couple of different areas of the game and he's he's great his passive by the way makes him immune to turn meter decreasing effects pretty solid pretty good his aura gives you speed in arena battles uh 17 it's only average right it's only okay but again you can get this guy as an early to mid game player and in the early to mid game this is really good. This is great. Uh, obviously falls off later in the game, but he can still be good as like, you know, one of the back rank champions later in the game. He's decent. He's okay for arena. Only okay, I'd say. But when you get him, he'll probably be one of the better champions you have for arena when you get him. If you're mostly, you know, low spend or free to play. Even if you, uh, even if you are a paying player, he might still be extremely, extremely good. Look at his stats then. He actually has very solid base stats. Tons of health, so he's nice and tanky. His attack is very low. He does have good damage multipliers on his skills. So he does lots with attack, but it's just hard to boost his attack up because attack percentage doesn't do much for him. The best way really to boost his attack would be to give him like an attack ring, a crit damage necklace, and an attack banner if you can afford those stats. And that's really only if you got him at level 60. You can't even run him at level 50, guys. He works great at 50. He won't do much damage at 50, but he still does AoE stuns and he still does all of these buffs. So he's still great at 50. 
but personally i do think he is worth taking up to 60 uh when you have the time to do so he's he's well well worth it uh again the way i have him built out is uh the main thing is speed i just want him to go fast speed 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 as fast as possible i have him running 246 obviously you don't need him this fast when you first get him um but i the more speed you can get on him the better you know at least 200 really is what you should be able to do by the time you get this guy you've you know cleared doom tower normal basically three times uh, you should be able to get him a good chunk over 200 and then you're pretty happy the more the better 100 percent crit rate so that he gets all the benefits from his basic abilities you can run him obviously at 70 percent crit rate because he does give himself 30 percent i prefer to just give him 100 percent just to keep it simple so that when I move between waves and Doom Tower or dungeons or whatever, that he's definitely going to get this AOE stun. Right? He only does the AOE stun if he crits. So if if he pops his buff on wave one, you kill wave one, you go into wave two, and he doesn't have this ability, and he's not critting, then it makes it unreliable. I just build him with 100% crit rate. Uh, you can build him with less, though, depending on the teams that you're building him for. Um, and yeah, then accuracy, enough accuracy. 360, that's enough for all of Doom Tower hard, right? You don't need that much. Uh, starting out again, starting out, I'd aim for about 200, right? So at least 200 speed and then about 200 accuracy. And that's got you good for that early to mid game, right? Dungeons up to level 20 easily. Doom Tower normal, good chunk of Doom Tower hard. You're sorted, you're solid. Crit rate, and then just whatever stats you can grab. Uh, in terms of spe specific gear pieces I have, obviously we've got a lot of pieces with good speed. Like this weapon is really, really good with three rolls in speed. Uh, headpiece at two rolls in speed and some attack percent for some damage, fine. Uh, one roll in speed only on the shield, could be better. Crit rate gloves then with actually unglyphed and only one roll in speed. HP percentage chest with no speed, which kind of sucks. And uh, of course, no surprise, speed boots. Uh, going for the perception and accuracy sets, again, upping his accuracy, upping his speed, relatively straightforward in that stuff for his rings. I think I've got him, yeah, I've got him in a wacky ring here, right? A defensive ring with two rolls and attack percent. Yeah, not many champions use this on. Uh, I would actually rather, yeah, you know what? This ring is better. 5% chance to counterattack when hit with attack, flat attack. Attack percent, HP percent. I'd actually rather have him in this ring, to be honest, for a bit more damage. Just get through the content a bit faster that I use him for. But I haven't bothered, and this is fine. He's fine with this. Um, but yeah, again, you can put him in damaging accessories if you're comfortable, or you can just put him in tanky accessories, right? So defense or HP, defense, HP percent, that sort of thing. I have him in a crit damage neck. Again, put him in defensive ones if you need. And then his best banner will generally be accuracy banner with speed substats. This isn't a great banner. It's an average accuracy banner, uh, you know, whatever, five-star rare. It's okay with one roll in speed. You could do much better and make him stronger, but that's what I've got him in. It does the job. It works fine. Uh, for the masteries, actually some funky stuff here. So fairly standard. You don't need shield breaker. You could put him in something else, but why not? Like he'd actually be pretty good with um, Heart of Glory. Might actually be better, to be honest, but eh, it doesn't really bother me. Crit rate. Crit damage is the main thing. And then down the left-hand side, main deal you're looking for is War Master. Adds a lot of damage, right? This really is what helps him do damage and is one of the big reasons to six-star him on top of getting him a banner and just increasing his stats. And accuracy tree, accuracy. Uh, charge focus I avoid. Increases his accuracy when he's no skills on cooldown. He defaults into doing his buff skill first. So then when he goes and he does his AoE stun, he does have a skill on cooldown. So this is useless. So I give him Exalt and Death instead. Heals him. The first time an enemy is killed each round. The big reason, again, for Exalt and Death is to get over to Rapid Response. 30% chance of increasing turn meter by 10% when a buff he casts is removed or expires. And he puts three buffs on everyone every three turns. So this is going to give him lots of turn meter. Again, just fast, fast, fast. Same thing over here. Arcane Celerity. Chance when a debuff he casts is removed or expired. That's the stuns. Uh, more speed and stuff from Lore of Steel from gear sets. Decrease turn meter on his initial A1. Some speed when people are dead. Then the other big thing I think is lasting gifts. Just extend the duration of his buffs. Get more out of the increased speed, the increased crit rate buffs. Generally what you're looking for. Uh, I'm going to jump over real fast. So I recorded this video already and it was, it was 36 minutes long. So I tried, decided to redo it um, <laughs> for you guys. But unfortunately I, I used my, my, my 
Faction Wars Keep. I want to show you him for Faction Wars, where he is incredibly good. He's an MVP for Faction Wars, and it shows you some of him at his best. One of the best champions in the game for Faction Wars straight up. Now, obviously, we've got a very good team here. You know, Sathalia is a legendary, bringing debuff, cleansing, and lots of healing. I've got Baron. He just, again, he's he's the meme lord, legendary, void legendary, but any damage dealer would do. But this is, for example, look at that. That's what Archmage does so well. He goes in there. He hit his first target, Norog, on the far left. Norog is actually a great one to target if you need to do this with some control, if you can't do it full auto. Target Norog with his A2. Norog's immune to stuns and hard CC. So you hit him with that initial A2 hit, and then it bounces the... the, the extra AoE hit, and that AoE hit is what stuns. And you can see it stunned actually three of those different enemies, which is fantastic, right? Really good, just for locking down most of that enemy wave. So it's all about giving you that control. Um, yeah, the, the other MVP would actually be this guy right here, Stagnite. Stagnite's also amazing, giving you AoE decreased defense, AoE decreased attack, and then decreased speed on his A1. Uh, I actually only have mine at level 50 because I've got, you know, we're smashing this faction. I've got so many banner lords. I've got like all the good ones. Um, <laughs> and then Ursula is another great one. She's a void epic. Look at this. Again, Archmage comes in. Look at that. Boom. One, two, three. He stunned everyone else, right? So good. So nice. Um, but yeah, Ursula gives you increased attack, which does help Archmage's attack. She gives you AoE strengthen, AoE increased defense, AoE revive, which is useful. You'll see that the boss here in Faction War 21 is pretty nasty for banner lords. Again, pro tip, we're on auto. We're going to click the boss. The reason being that we're going to keep attacking the boss. Um, an Archmage, he's going to just be basically bouncing his time slip ability off the boss. So he hits the boss, and then the AoE, the ricochet, hits the side adds and stuns them down. The reason being that this boss right here, he has ally attack. These adds on the side, they do tons of damage, especially the right hand one ignores defense. It rips through your team. It will wipe you out so quickly. Archmage nullifies that completely by just making you run super quick. Your team is just faster than they are. And then just doing those cleaving stuns, just locking down those side adds. Here he goes again. Bam. Look at it. There he goes again. Both of those adds are stunned. We've got no other stuns on this team. It's it. It's entirely Archmage running quickly and locking it down. And then Stagnite giving us decreased speed on the boss, helping us out as well. And I mean, that's basically it. There he goes again. They missed their turn. Archmage goes in, AoE stuns again, and we're super safe. We don't even need, we don't even need Ursula there for her revive. We don't even need Sathalia there for her heal. They're just kind of there for fun. They're there for fun, right? And and there you go. It gives you an idea. Stagnite, uh, you know, great as well. Uh, but Archmage doing solid damage, right? One of the better damage healers in the team. Obviously, Baron, the meme lord with his sky piercer, his hidden skill. When it procs, it, it's, it's amazing. When you get unlucky and it doesn't, your run is slower. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Baron doing the most most work. But any damage dealer really kind of works here. The main deal is Archmage locking down those side adds and keeping your team going fast. It's all about that speed, all about going fast. Let me show you a couple of other places where I run him. Uh, one place I do run him is... Uh, Doom Tower. I see the daily reset actually came in while I've been trying to record this video. Um, so my standard team is actually not with Ninja. My standard team I run with is is this, right? This is my standard team. This is called my DT control team, my Doom Tower control team. And this is a free-to-play accessible team um, <clears throat> that will let you get into Doom Tower hard. Uh, now, okay, Yoshi the Drunkard, he was a, f a Fragment Fusion, but it was a while ago. What does Yoshi bring, and what would you need to replace him with? And then I'll talk about these the Trifecta, the Archmage plus Physics and Sil Trifecta. These are, these are the three that go super well together. But Yoshi gives us a Speed Aura, which is really useful. Again, helping us run faster. And the idea of this team is basically just Archmage, just in team form, which is we go really fast with lots of crowd control, and we don't do crazy damage, but we do okay damage. We do only, you know, mediocre damage, but we're fast and we crowd control them. They never get to hit us. And that's the sort of team that you're going to need to beat Doom Tower hard, right? That's the sort of team you're going to need that doesn't rely on Seer. I actually beat Doom Tower for the first time without a Seer. This is how I beat it, was with a crowd control team like this. Yoshi, though, is great. He's a bit of an undersung hero. I'll cover him another time. But he basically brings in AoE True Fear, uh, which is a place. So this helps you bypass affinity issues, which is a problem for this team because the trifecta, you got two 
blue affinity, so struggles a lot against red. Also gives you increased attack, which is nice for Archmage doing more damage. He also brings some decreased accuracy and HP burns. His A1 also stuns, so he's good. Vizix, daily login champion. Uh, you'll probably have Vizix around about the time you get Archmage if you're, you know, a consistent player. Uh, you might get Arch. I personally got Archmage before I got Vizix. You might get Archmage after Vizix. But the three of these together are super good. Vizix comes in, A, we decrease speed. A, we provoke, both on three turn cooldown and then single target turn meter depletion. Sill comes in then. We already looked at, looked at Sill in today's video. AoE stun on a three turn cooldown. She brings a revive. She brings uh, some healing and a bit of extra increased speed. And she brings some decreased speed and turn meter control on her A1. And then Archmage, of course, as we know, he's speed boosting us. These are likely champions you don't have 100% crit rate on. He gives you them more crit rate, more crit damage, so we do more. And then those AoE stuns and him running faster. And then you could stick something like Ninja. I, I personally generally use Brogni as a safe bet. Brogni basically protects us from things like um, uh, Tormens, right? Or just whenever the enemy team randomly does get a turn, Brogni just makes this safe, but a bit slower. You could put in something like Ninja. You could put in, in, in terms of Epics, you could put in something like Achak. And basically what we're looking for is, again, more champions, him, AoE chance to freeze, right? More champions with AoE crowd control. Uh, instead of Atrak, you could put in put in someone with AoEs in a stun set. You could put in, like, Basilisk in a stun set. You could put in Allure for turn meter control. Um, you could put in Vogoth for AoE provoke. There's tons of options. You, you could even, if you're super free to play, you could put in a Bellower in, like, a stun set. I don't know if mine is geared. Let's find out. Let's find out if he's geared up. No idea. Let's go. Let's see how this works. Bellower, Void Rare. Slap him in a stun set. Have him going AoE. Let's see how we do. So you can see here again, Archmage helping us run faster. This is a really nasty wave, actually. It's the hardest uh, uh, Doom Tower level I can show you. You can see right there, Archmage, he did his stun, but it weak hit because he's against red affinity, so he, it didn't actually fire off the second hit and stun. So that is a weakness, and Sill's going to miss stuns as well. But hopefully we'll be okay. Again, you can see those true fears coming out from uh, our dude there, helping us stay faster. Sill does her stuns. And you can see this this enemy team, even though they're red affinity and two of our stunners are blue affinity and are weak hitting, they haven't got a chance to go yet. <laughs> they haven't got a chance to even hit us. This is the trifecta. Again, this, you can build this team. And this team can beat almost every wave of Doom Tower hard. Now, I do have different teams that I use more often than this, but I still use this team. Why? Because this team is consistent. This team beats waves that other teams can't beat because they just can't get past the crowd control. Like this wave, if if these Shazars hit us, we're screwed. Uh, we actually might be screwed. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. Look at that. The trifecta stunned them, locked them down, all solid, no stress. Um, yeah, it's something you, you kind of have to watch out for and that you can do is like, as you're, if, if you're struggling with this team on, on really, really difficult waves, you can like slowly pick up like, okay, at this point, they're almost all dead, right? I could just start A1-ing to pick them off and go in with all my cooldowns to the next wave. Now, we're fine. We don't need to do that, but you can to make sure you have all of your abilities, all your CC ready to go. Oh, one attack. There we go. First attack in. End of wave two. They finally got their first attack. They hit us once. It happened. Um, but yeah, this works. And again, with those just daily login reward champs, it works great. Uh, you could put in Akoth the Seared. He's probably the second champion I'll do a guide on. He's the second Doom Tower normal champion, another game changer, AoE HP burner. You could put him in in the lead. That can work. That can totally work. It can be great. Oh, there we go. Big hit coming in. You can see how nasty. Look at that. One hit, Vizix died from her ally protection. She fell over dead. Uh, Bellower almost died. You can see how tough these waves can be. And this is, again, these are tanky champions. These are legendaries. These are defense-based legendaries, mostly. Um, or support legendaries. They're not squishy champions by any means. You saw how he's built. Uh, so that's why this sort of stuff is important. You know, this is why CC can be so effective. Uh, yeah, you can build this team. The Trifecta, Bellower, make it a four-facta. I don't know what the right word is. That sounds dirty. Four-facta? I don't know. Uh, but Bellower, he's just a void rare. Build him fast with stun set, and bam, you're good. You're done. Case closed. There we go. Bam. Boom. Smash through it. Not my best time by any means, 
but solid team. You can see Archmage. I mean, he's not doing the top damage by any means, but he's doing solid damage, right? He's doing solid damage, and he's just keeping the team running faster. He's stunning the enemy team. He obviously had a tough time against the red affinity guys there, but he outdamaged still the Drakes. And again, to, to put it in perspective, my Sill is not built badly. My Sill is built with, you know, she has uh, she has 4,000 defense, 100% crit rate, 160% crit damage. Like, she's no slouch in terms of damage. Archmage out damaged her. He's doing a good job. So that's that's some sort of one Doom Tower team that I like to show you. Again, just to give you a quick glance of sort of the alternatives that I do like to use. Uh, I'm stuck on Bomb Wolf 50, right? Bloody nightmare. Bloody nightmare. Um, it's like a, free to, a completely free-to-play login reward and free guaranteed champions you could use. This one right here. The thing you'd lose out on this team, Ninja brings some AoE freezes. You have more damage, but a bit, bit less control with Akoth. Uh, but yeah, or you could stick in like... Um, yeah, any speed lead would also work pretty well. Even like uh, Hikatoon would work pretty well, giving you some extra speed boosting and stuff like that. Can be okay, though you do get increased speed from Archmage already. But yeah, I, I obviously have like a Seer team for nuking waves, and I've got a Meme Freeze team, which is based around Torment. Uh, so I prefer to use those because they're fun. But the Control team, it's slower, but it's consistent. So but consistent. Now, a couple of other places you can run this guy. Um, <clears throat> You can run him. Oh, we already saw Faction Wars. You can run him in dungeons. I actually use him in my, uh, yeah, in, in just a Seer team. In fact, I think I was messing around with this team. Um, but, I mean, this gives you a basic gist of what it does. This is a Seer team, and Archmage is fantastic for Seer teams. Seer basically nukes people by ripping off buffs, and Archmage gives you three buffs. So here we go. Boom. Seer goes in, rips off all the buffs. Archmage gave us tons, does lots of damage. Then look, he comes into wave two. Archmage does his AoE stun. Ninja actually helps in this circumstance with an AoE freeze. Make sure this wave is not gonna do anything to us. We reset the cooldowns with Renegade and then Seer rips it off again. We're onto the boss. And uh, yeah, at this point we just sort of slowly kill the boss. More stuns from Archmage, locking them down. And this is basically what he does in nearly every sort of dungeon, right? But this is obviously a Seer team in particular. But he brings the same sort of gist to any dungeon team you're running. You know, increased speed, crit rate, crit damage. It's always good. And then AoE stuns helps with every single wave. Um, and yeah, he's just overall just a fantastic champion. Here he goes again. Just slamming, doing solid damage there. Um, so he's not going to be top of the damage, but he's just giving us that control, giving us those buffs. Bam, we rip on through. There we go. One minute. Got on through. That's a Seer team. Obviously, Seer doing most of the wave killing. Ninja doing some wave killing too, but mostly there for the boss. That gives you an idea. This exact team, again, a Seer team works on like Dragon. We'd want Dragon 24 would work. Dragon 24, green affinity, red wouldn't work. That would not work, you would fail. But again, Archmage does the same thing here. Obviously even more important to have that stun on wave two, just to make sure they're not gonna do any, any shenanigans that we don't want. So Lydia, decreased defense and weaken AoE. Archmage buffs us. Lady uh, Seer kills them. Archmage then, bam, look at that. Look at that. Stun, 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 stun. Stun four different targets. Lydia puts block uh, block active skills on the final target. None of them can do really anything to us. Doesn't matter anyway, because it's a Seer team. Uh, we kill them and the boss can be a little bit nasty, but basically Ninja will kill the boss. Some of our, we, this could probably be close. I normally use a different team for Dragon. I use a Poison Explodey team. Um, but this, this obviously, this is an end game team that's, you know, going to, really quickly farm endgame dungeons. And Archmage is a core part of it. Uh, he's a core part of it, super good. So yeah, he's great in Faction Wars, great in Doom Tower Hard, great in uh, with a Seer team for endgame dungeons. And then he's just gonna be solid for a lot of dungeons overall as well. He's gonna be great just in general. Any green or blue affinity dungeon, he's gonna be good. Just avoid any of those red affinities. Okay, can we do this? This is actually gonna be pretty close. All right, Ninja blasting that damage. Archmage, give us some buffs. Oh, Archmage is down. Ninja, it's all on you. So this does get spicy at the end. But I think we'll pull through. Ninja, yeah, easy. There we go. Bam, we got through. Fastest time. Actually, it can be faster when people die sometimes. But again, Archmage, he's not blasting out the damage, but he's bringing you crowd control, giving you those buffs, upping that seer damage. And that's what he does in this sort of team. Um, yeah, uh, I guess the final thing to show you would be an arena run. Uh, where is an arena run? Here we go. Arena run. Um, oh, this team might be too nasty. <laughs> uh, this team, let, let's check that, check out this team. Sure. Uh, okay. I had a team set up. Ah, all right. She's in the sparring pit. Okay. I put this team together 
I could obviously put Lydia in, but I wanted to make it a bit more free to play. The idea here is that we have uh, Arbiter to increase our attack and turn meter boost us. We just, you know, we're up against Arbiters. I need an Arbiter to match their speed, okay? It's the way it is. Uh, early game, you could use High Katoon, obviously, and he'd fit in just fine. Archmage gonna increase our speed and crit rate and crit damage, help our damage nuker hit harder. Ugo will decrease defense and block buffs, AoE, as an epic, and then Ninja in there for some damage. We'll see if we're fast enough. I don't know if we are. Um, <clears throat> we are fast enough, so here we go. He helps us run faster. Block buffs. Are we going to be okay here? Maybe. Ooh, we got stripped. Ooh, we're in trouble. Okay, Archmage going to need you to save our butts here, buddy. Bam, Archmage comes in with the stun. Why do we not stun her? That's not good. So this is bad. We've not stunned the one that we really, really need to stun. We got a bit of a heal. Okay. Are we going to be okay here? She's going to try steal our buffs. All right. Let's maybe try kill the Arbiter. Let's target Arbiter. Bam. Okay. That's a good hit. Archmage speeds us up. There we go. That was that was a close fight. Bloody hell. That was a close fight. But some of that stuns there. Some of those stuns coming in clutch. I feel like that skull crane resisted a lot of stuff. She feel, I feel like she had a lot of resistance. That was spicy. Let's look at this really tanky team. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's find out. Okay, so tanky team. So again, we actually saw this in Faction Wars at Norag. We'll target Norag so that we get the we bounce the stun off of him. Okay, we didn't actually get the this is bad. We she's gonna get counterattack, but actually no, she's not because we're gonna block buffs. Ha ha ha. Come on, Archmage. Stun them up. They're immune to debuffs. Okay, never mind. They're getting all this stuff. Okay, so I guess this is gonna go badly. This is not gonna go well at all. This is not gonna go well at all. Let's just have them target whatever the heck they want to. Again, nice thing here is he's immune to turn meter depletion. So, like, none of the, uh, the Valkyrie turn meter depletion is going to affect him. But he's going to be pretty crappy, unfortunately. All the buffs he's going to put out are going to help Valkyrie, though they block buffs, so we don't have to worry about that too much now. Um, let's, have him, let's, let's try kill this guy off. He's the one that's putting out the block, block buffs, which sucks. If we can kill him, that'll make life easier. They don't do a ton of damage, luckily. I say as they absolutely smack Arbiter. Okay, he's trying to boost our speed. Didn't work too well. We block buffs, but Ninja's still going strong. We'll see if we can pull through. We'll see if we can pull through. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tricky. Um, so yeah, again, for, you can see for Arena, he's okay. This is kind of nasty because they put block, block debuffs on, which means he could not stun, which sucked. He's going to come around again. He's going to probably... Oh, she might rip off. Yeah, there we go. Arbiter. Her final move? Yeah, her final heroic sacrifice. Her final heroic sacrifice. Let's take it off auto. Let's see if we can have a look at this guy. We're in a nasty spot here. Let's hit him and try stun all the rest. Stun a few of them. Man, there's not much we can do about this. Let's smack this. Okay. Smack this again. Let's try to just kill this guy. Now, here we kind of want Archmage to die. I think this is just going to go badly. <laughs> I think we just surrender at this point. Um, because, yeah, unfortunately, not going so well. We can block stuff. I need freaking... Okay, get out of here. Fuck that. Fuck that, man. Fuck that, dude, with your fucking cleansing. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's the worst, dude. All right, let's refresh, get some easier teams. Let's look at this team. Let's look at this team. This is just a team I threw together, so it's not working too great, huh? Um, so let's see. Here we go. Block buffs. She's going to try boost them. Ninja kill. So that works pretty well. Again, upping the damage with her crit damage helps. Let's try this team. This team is triple reviver. Let's see if it works with the Candrophon. Pretty spooks. Pretty spooky. Block buffs. Bam, ninja comes in, freezes. There we go. Ouch, that hurts. Archmage, get them with the stun, buddy. Wow. Okay, good. He stunned Kandrafon. Uh, well, it didn't matter because Ninja killed them all. But you get sort of the vibe of what's happening here. And then, hey, I'm out of I'm out of fights. So I guess that's us out of fights. And that, I think, will do the video. Man, I re-recorded this video to make it shorter, and it's still like 30 minutes long. Okay, I shaved seven minutes off. The last one was like, was way longer. I hope you appreciate that this one's a bit shorter. I probably missed some info. But you get the idea. So Archmage, what does he do? He's bringing you really good buffs. It's a great suite of buffs with his A3, incredibly useful, and then really good AoE stun, really rare ability, and very, very strong again 
for multiple areas of the game. He's great in end game teams. He's great in early game, mid game teams. He's just fantastic. Just have him run fast and he brings crowd control, buffs, boost your team, faction wars MVP, doom tower hard, can work okay, okay in arena. He's okay in arena. Um, great in dungeon teams. He's just solid all around. Great champion. Archmage Helmet. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry it was so long, but there was a lot to cover with this guy, I guess. Um, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.